Hey, I want to welcome everyone to Straight Talk tonight. Uh, we missed our last uh, session two weeks ago. Uh, I was in Mexico doing some meetings there, saw some powerful things happen by the, by the power of God and uh, came back on that same Monday night, so we didn't, didn't make it in for that. But we're back tonight and resuming Straight Talk. And uh, if you're watching this for the first time, <clears throat> you really want to uh, just stay tuned here and, and uh, hear what we got to talk about tonight. Straight Talk is we're dealing with real life issues, real life struggles, Christian walk struggles, and then we're just talking about what God's Word has to say about it, straight and real. And I just want to get into this, this message tonight. I've just had something on my heart to share uh, with, with people tonight. And again, Straight Talk, we're reaching out to people that are struggling in their Christian walk. They're uh, maybe offended at God, away from God, um, have been out of church, in church. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of different people that we've been talking to, but people have been getting helped by just hearing some of the truths that we're ministering. We're talking about some issues and things that people deal with. And uh, tonight, I want to talk to you about your life and destiny in your life. And uh, I want to talk to you about a, a just a, I, I'm giving, if I give it a title, I want to call it, Don't Cancel Your Assignment. You know, you have, a, you have a divine purpose and a divine call on your life. Many people in the Bible uh, discovered that early. Some discovered it very late. <clears throat> but we're going to get into some things tonight. We're just going to talk about the fact that you have, a, you have a call. You have a purpose in life. And it doesn't make any difference if you're living out in the party realm or you spend more time hanging around the bars and the party scene, or uh, you just infrequently go to church, occasionally go to church, or you're just saying, you know, I just think God did a lot of things um, to my life and against my life, and I'm kind of hacked off at God. Well, I want you to listen in, because I think what you're going to hear tonight is going to make a big difference in your life. You know, I've shared in the past, uh, many years ago, back in 1982, I turned my life around to the Lord, but prior to that, I had been born again, and then I had fallen away from God, and uh, I just lived in the party world. All my friends were partiers, and that's what we lived for. We did it, you know, Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday. Uh, sometimes it was just, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was a nonstop. <laughs> Some of you can relate, but, you know, in those days, I was never satisfied uh, I can remember going into a convenience store to buy a six-pack of beer and just thinking, "What am I? Why? Why do I do this? You know, what am I doing this? It's just—it's the same old, same old. It's never any different. I know what it's going to be." And uh, I think some of you can relate to what I'm talking about. Maybe some of you never been there, but listen, you know, there's things on the inside of you. There's things in your life that God's been doing all throughout your life, and whether you're aware of it or not aware of it, uh, God's still doing a work. And I, when I think back on those years when I was uh, even far back into early high school, uh, I was stuck in a, a Spanish class and it was mostly girls in there and it was an elective and I didn't even want to be there. But uh, I had no, I, no idea, no clue that many years later I was going to end up going to speaking to the Latin people in this world. I had no idea I'd ever do that. And uh, again, you know, I was just in Mexico. I, I'm, I'm having to kind of learn, the, you know, the language now. And uh, <clears throat> it's been a little bit of a work with everything that's going on in life. But even uh, in school, I remember another, another class that I took, and it was a typing class, and it was just, I don't know, I think I was the only guy in there, and it was another one of those deals, I wanted to take woodshop, loved woodshop, but I didn't get to go in, too late, I missed the elective, too many people signed up, and I got stuck in this typing class, but when you know, many years later, I ended up writing newsletters, and was called, had a call in my life, into the ministry, and if you'd asked me back in high school, uh, and that was 1979 when I graduated. If I was going to be a minister and speak to people, I would have told you, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. That will never happen. Uh, but, you know, God has a way of, of positioning us and doing things in our lives. And, you know, many of you out there, you're thinking, you know, life just, 
totally stinks for me and I haven't had anything great. I don't even know what you're talking about, God having a destiny and God doing anything in my life. Well, I want to read you a story uh, about a guy by the name of Joseph. In fact, I'm just going to kind of talk to you about it. It's found in the 37th chapter of the book of uh, Genesis. And Joseph was a, was a man who had dreams. And many of you have had, had dreams. And if you think back, you've had dreams. Dreams in your heart. Not just dreams in the night, but I'm talking about you've seen yourself doing things. And it, it's never happened, but those dreams have never gone away. Do you ever wonder why? Well, here was a guy. He had dreams. And it said, Joseph uh, dreamed a dream and he told his brothers, but they hated him yet the more. He was kind of... You know, there was many brothers in this family, and he, he was kind of the father's favorite a little bit, and the older brothers knew it. And, you know, <clears throat> they just didn't like him. They, they kind of, I guess they wanted the attention that he got. Uh, maybe they didn't think they were getting as much. And <clears throat> he dreamed this dream that was, you know, it was in a kind of a, a, a type. It showed these sheaves, and they were, they were bowing down, and he had one sheaf, and there was others. And the dream, basically what it was typifying, was that his brothers were bowing down to him. Man, they were hacked off about that. And then it said he dreamed yet another dream. And, and even the, the sun and the moon bowed down, and that was representative of father and mother. And then they thought, this guy needs to die. Uh, <clears throat> he can take all his crazy dreams and go down to the pit. In the process of time, he was out working with his brothers, and, you know, they, they just got so disgusted with him and his dreams, and his dad made him this beautiful coat and gave it to him, and they, they dug this pit, threw, tied him up, and threw him in it. Now, just think about this. He gets thrown into this pit, and he's just left, and they don't care what happens to him, and... In the process of, of, you know, I don't know if it was a day or two, there were some traveling, travelers coming along, and they got their camels and their donkeys and all their stuff, and these guys are just kind of a wild bunch. And they find him down in there, and they just decide that they're going to make property out of him. And they take him, and they keep him, <clears throat> and they travel on, and they sell him. And he ends up in Egypt working under one of Pharaoh's men, and uh, he ends up finding he's got some skills and some different things in, in his life. And so he puts him in a position of a uh, little bit of authority. And it's not too long that uh, this guy by the name of Potiphar, who he was working for, his wife took uh, extra <laughs> liking to Joseph. And it wasn't very long until she was wanting him to sleep with him. And he was going, I can't do this thing. I'm not going to sin against my master, or they called him, you know, his boss. I'm not doing this. And she just kept urging him day after day after day. And finally one day she grabbed him, tore his clothes off, and said, I want you to sleep with me. He ran out the door, but he left his coat. Well, she told a big lie and said that uh, this guy, you know, basically, he tried to rape me, and look, I've got his coat. So he went to prison. Now, his life's not going too good. He's having dreams. He tells his dreams to his family. And uh, it's not long until they think he's just nuts and out of his mind. But God was showing Joseph that he was going to be a ruler one day. And no one else could see this dream. They couldn't, they couldn't see what he saw. And, you know, when people's dreams are smashed like that, you know, I mean, think about it. Your own family sells you into slavery. And then the people who grab you and deliver you, or not just sells you into slavery, but your own family throws you, in, you know, into this pit. And then some people find you, and then you're sold into slavery. And then working for this guy, and you're thinking, well, maybe life's getting a little bit better. And then guy's wife tries to sleep with you, and you run off and try to do the upright thing. And next thing you know, she tells a lie, and you're in prison. Now, that's just not looking like a great life. But Joseph would not let go of his dream. And uh, he just kept living right and doing right. And he gained favor, and God caused him to have favor in the sight of the jailer to the point that he became uh, like second in command in charge in the jail. And it wasn't long until some of the people in prison started having dreams, and they said, man, I had this weird dream the other night. I dreamed that I went before the, the king, you know, and here he was talking to the king's cupbearer, and he said, uh, you know, I saw that I went before him and I, and I got, 
and, and then this happened and that happened. And Joseph said, I'll tell you what that dream means. It means you're going to be, in three days, you're going to be restored to your, to your job. And it came to pass. And then another guy in jail, he had a dream. And God enabled Joseph to interpret the dream. And that guy's dream came to pass. Well, it wasn't long until Pharaoh had some dreams, but they were really troubling him. And all of his magicians, all his wise men, nobody could tell him what they meant. And they said, oh, there was a guy in prison, this Joseph guy, he could interpret dreams. So they bring him in. And Joseph interprets the dream correctly. And the Pharaoh sees that this guy has got an incredible gift in his life. And he begins to be promoted. And uh, over, I believe, about a third of his entire realm. Now, David went from the pit to the palace in a short amount of time. Pretty amazing story. You know, I told you I wanted to talk to you about don't cancel your assignment. You know, why would I say that? Well, many of you, you know, you've got a destiny. You've got a call on your life. God has a purpose. God has a plan for your life. And, and whether you recognized it or didn't recognize it, or whether you have and you've just done nothing about it, or you haven't recognized it, but you do recognize that, you know, I've had things in my heart. I've had dreams. But the bottom line is, is you are discontented. You're not happy where you are. You don't feel fulfilled in life. And you know that you're out of place. You know that you're not where you belong. Much like I was many years ago when I was out there in that party realm and looking around at everybody and just thinking, this is the same old stupid routine that we do every weekend, all the time. It never changes. It's so predictable. Same music, same crowd, same drug, same party, same everything. But you know, that night I just decided I'm done. Now, I say that I decided, but God had an influence in that. I just didn't realize what was going on. But on the way home, I was, I was just thinking, well, I think I'll listen to the radio. I just decided to go home. I was just disgusted with all that party thing. And I started flipping through the channels, and everything I turned to was just, ah, oh, another song I already heard that, heard that, heard that. And I kept flipping through, and finally I just went over to the AM dial, and that was... <laughs> I never listened there, all the rock stations were. They, were. they were on the FM channel. But I turned over there, and all of a sudden I heard just one piano note at the beginning of a song, and something said to me, uh, listen to that, you want to hear it. And I, you know, sometimes you just think the thoughts are out of your own head and your own origin, and you just think, well, whatever, you know. So I just started listening to it. And it wasn't just a few moments until the presence of God filled my car. It was so strong that I thought that God Almighty was sitting in the front seat. I had a Camaro, 71 Sport Coupe, all, all fixed up. And I'm driving home, it's dark. You know, it's around 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And uh, my car is filled with the presence of God. Now, I've been away from God for years. Say, so how do you know it was God? Listen, if God gets in the car with you like that, you won't have any wondering who it is or what it is. You'll know. And I'm telling you, I, I was scared, to be honest. I was scared. There, I realize now there was not really anything for me to be scared of, but <clears throat> I just knew that I wasn't where I was supposed to be, and I certainly wasn't counting on <laughs> the presence of God filling my car on the way home from a party. But there it was, and the thing was going down. And I pulled up in front of my house, and God's presence was so strong, I, I felt like he was just sitting right next to me, and I thought, I'll turn, and I'll look, and I'll see him, and I'll die of just sheer fright. <laughs> So I just looked straight forward, staring out through the windshield in the dark, and all these memories of things that God had done in my life in the past came flooding back to me. And I just found myself with one thought. I never have really given God 
I've given the party in. I've given what I want to do 100%. I've been ruler over my life, but I've never even given him a chance. Oh, I've been to church a few times, but I didn't know nothing. Could you say I serve God? Nah, not really. Not at all. <laughs> Some of you watching this right now, you're just going, man, you're just like talking my story. That's why you're watching tonight, because you're here by a divine appointment. God Almighty is trying to reach out to you. He's been calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you. And you know right now, right while I'm talking, the presence of God is coming all around you. And you just sense it. And you know it's real. And you haven't even sensed God's presence like this, but you are right now while you're watching this. I know you are. I can sense the presence of God in this room while I'm talking. And I'm talking to people right now. There's girls out there watching this, but there's a bunch of guys. And some of you guys, you just, you know, you played the tough guy thing and, and the cool guy thing, but you're not even fulfilled on the inside. You got something great on the inside of you that just wants to come alive and, and come forth, and it hadn't been doing it. It's because you're running with the wrong people doing the wrong stuff. You're not with the right people doing the right stuff at the right time. You're just completely out of socket. And, you know, if you've ever played sports and you knock a bone out of joint or something, yeah, it's very uncomfortable. And the bottom line is you're miserable until you get that thing back in place. And that's the way you're going to be until you say yes to God. And that night in that Camaro, I said yes. I said, all right, God. I said, I, I'm just, I don't know, really know how to serve you right now, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to church. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing something about this. You see, you know, talk is cheap and, and words don't mean much unless we have action behind it. And uh, that night I turned my life around to the Lord and I've been serving him ever since. And so I just want to talk to some of you tonight. Maybe you're like Joseph. You know, there was other people like Moses. Maybe you've heard of him in the Bible. Great leader, the one that led God's people out of Egyptian bondage. They were in it for 400 years. And uh, when he was born... You know, uh, they were going to kill the firstborn uh, child in that time, of, especially uh, of the, the Jewish people. And, and they put him in a little makeshift reed uh, basket and sent him down the river. And Pharaoh's daughter found him, took him in, and he was raised in the palace. But he became the deliverer of, Is of Israel, and he became uh, mightily used of God. Esther was another person who, just a, a young girl, a beautiful girl, but time came when the king was looking for, um, you know, a new, a new queen, and they just went through the land on horseback, soldiers in the military, and they just started catching all the beautiful girls and taking them in there, and he just was looking at them all one by one. And Esther got chosen. But in the process of time, there was a man by the name of Haman, and he hated the Jews hated those people <clears throat> and he went to the king and uh, <clears throat> long story short he just worked the, got the king to work a little decree with some other things that would include putting those people to death and annihilate the entire nation of them and God used Esther to expose the whole scheme and expose Haman and uh, a man by the name of Mordecai her uncle was a man who was brought in. He had done something uh, noteworthy for the king, but never rewarded. And uh, because he got paraded through the streets and, and notoriety came to him, Haman just hated it, hated the Jews and hated the people all the more. But Esther was used of God to stop the annihilation of a, an entire nation. And uh, John the Baptist, before he was born, you know, the Spirit of God filled him. I mean, many people, you can read stories throughout the Bible. They had a divine destiny, a divine call. But, you know, Joseph, he could have said, life stinks. And he could have just gotten bitter, especially when he was thrown into the pit by his brothers and then grabbed by a bunch of bandits and sold for a slave. And then when he was doing what was right, he got thrown into jail, he could have thought his destiny was nothing but a bunch of trouble and could have despaired of living. He could have been suicidal. But he had a dream and he just wouldn't let go of it. And I want you to just to think about what God 
might be trying to do in your life. I want you to think about for a little bit dreams and things, desires that have been on the inside of you. Some of you watching right now, you have just desired to do some great things. You've been uh, company owners. Other ones, you've, you've seen yourself speaking to crowds. And some of you have seen yourself doing all kinds of different things and you just thought, oh, that's just craziness in me. Well, you know, Joseph had a dream that he was going to be a ruler. And uh, his life looked like anything but that. Until the day came when he went from the prison to the palace and he was made basically second in command by the Pharaoh himself. And he told the people, whatever this guy says, that's what you do. And his own brothers and his famine hit the land and his own brothers and his own family came down to Egypt to buy food. And uh, of course, Joseph was dressed up like an Egyptian ruler. And you know what happened? The brothers bowed down before him because they thought, man, we could die if we don't bow down to this guy. The parents bowed down and nobody knew who he was till he revealed himself. And then the Bible says they wept and the, the brothers were repenting and saying, we're sorry for what we did to you and we shouldn't have done that. And he said, you know, I think God just... Uh, orchestrated some things and brought me to this place so that I could bring salvation as it were to the family bring food so you wouldn't starve out to death and uh, he didn't allow the bitterness of his past to fill his present and some of you watching this you know you've had a lot of things happen that just they weren't good they weren't pleasant things but don't let the past control your present and cloud your future. You need to think about the fact that you were made in the image and in the likeness of God. The Bible says so in Genesis. That's the way he made Adam. And we were all descendants of Adam. We were made in his image and in his likeness. And God didn't make anyone uh, just to be tossed by the wayside. You have a purpose in life. You have a destiny in life. And God wants you to fulfill it to the fullest. So if you're away from God tonight, listen. I want you to stop blaming God. God's not your problem. Yeah, there's Christian people. I know I've heard all the stories about all the jerks and all the hypocrites. And, you know, I've had people say, man, I ain't going to the church house. There's a bunch of hypocrites out there. Well, there's a bunch of hypocrites in the bar. There's a bunch of hypocrites in the party. There's a hypocrites at the high school. There's hypocrites at the college. There's hypocrites in the grocery store. There's hypocrites all over the planet. But what are you going to be is the true question and the issue. <laughs> what are you going to be? Are you going to say, yeah, I knew God at one time, but, well, God didn't do all those things to you. Maybe some real hypocrites did do some things, but are you going to let a hypocrite stop you from your divine destiny? You could be another Joseph. You could be another Moses. You could be another Esther. You could be another John the Baptist. I mean, there was people that are mightily used of God. Look at Peter. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that he preached a sermon and 3,000 people came to the Lord, but yet he was the one that denied the Lord. Have you done anything worse than that? Peter had a call in his life. And God's goodness and mercy, he was able to forgive all of Peter's past. And Peter got so mightily used that the Bible says in the book of Acts that Peter came into some towns and when his shadow passed by people, they had sick people laying in the street, and when his shadow passed by them, the power of God came on them, the healing power of God, and they were healed. Totally healed by the power of God. Now that's absolutely phenomenal and amazing. But you know, Peter had a moment after he denied Christ and Jesus told him that he was going to do it. And he said, no way, I'll never do it. He said, the cock will crow, won't crow three times and then, or will crow three, and then you will have denied me three times. And it happened and Peter, Peter realized what he has done. And you know, I don't know about you, but I thought, man, what a moment that must have been. If anybody would have wanted to be considering, you know, taken their life and just be suicidal I think it would have been Peter he said my gosh I just denied the son of the living God but you know Jesus came back and hunted him up and he said hey Peter do you love me he said yes Lord I do 
He asked him again, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, I, I, yes, I do. He asked him the third time, and he said, Lord, you know that I do. He said, well, then feed my sheep. He gave him an assignment. And I'm telling you, don't cancel your assignment. Don't let life and circumstances and people and what didn't go right and what went wrong and what should have happened and what didn't happen, don't let that divorce stop you. Don't let those things cause you to cancel your assignment. I'm telling you, God has been working. God has been calling and calling and pleading and pulling and you've just not been responding like you need to. Some of you, you, you felt that tug and you're just like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can go back. And what are people going to say? Listen, forget about what people are going to say. People aren't your judge. People aren't your Lord. None of them shed blood for you and none of them called you. But God Almighty, He called you. He had a purpose on your life. He knew you before you were born. And it's time. These are the last days that we're in, people. Listen to me. Listen to this preacher. These are the last days that we're in. The signs of the time. You look at Israel and you see the things that are happening right now all over the world. We are in the last of the last days. And there is no more time to squander away. There's no more time to make excuses for what should have happened and what didn't happen. There's no more time to waste sorrowing over the past. It's time for you to look up because as the scripture said, your redemption is drawing near. You need to look up and say, God, here I am. Take me as I am. If you can use me, I'm available. It's a simple prayer like that. You know, when I turned my life around to the Lord, I didn't have any fancy prayers. I didn't know any scriptures to, to, to speak or how to pray. But I didn't know how to talk. God's not looking for you to do something super spiritual. He's not looking for you to put something on. He already knows who you are. He knows how you talk. He knows where you're at. What he wants from you is your heart. Will you give him your heart? Now, I know a lot of you watching this right now, you've been away from God. It's time to come back. It's time to do it tonight. Now, whether you've received Christ for the first time, whether I should say whether you have not ever received him for the first time, or whether you have but you've been away, I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to pray it. Listen, I, I know there's some young guys watching this right now. <clears throat> Have the guts to pray this prayer. <clears throat> Forget about your friends. Forget about what people are going to think. Maybe you're watching this with a couple people in the room, and they're elbowing one another, and you're just like, oh, no, man, what do you think? What do you think? I think you need to respond to this because there's something bigger than you that's calling you. Paul said it like this. He said, I want to get a hold of what got a hold of me. And I'm telling you something, friend. Something got a hold of me, and it was called Almighty God. Shook my life, changed my life, and set me out on a course. In just about two weeks, I'm on my way to Argentina. And I'm going to be speaking in a Bible school to some students who are going to launch out. Some of them are going to be placed over uh, some churches that are just waiting for them to come in as pastors. And some of them are going to go out as evangelists. And they're going to be soul winning machines. And I'll tell you what, some of you right here, you're watching this. You've got a call on your life. You ought to be out in the ministry. You ought to be serving God. You ought to be telling people about what God's done for you. But you have allowed life and circumstances just to drain you and sidetrack you and keep you from doing anything but what God has for you. But now is the time. It's tonight. It's tonight. It's right now. Don't put this off any longer. I'm going to pray. And when I pray, I want you to pray as well. Young man, young woman, some of the people that are watching this, I get ages anywhere from about 18 to, to 30. 30 year olds watching this. If you're watching this, or if you watch this on the, on the internet, on the archive, it doesn't make any difference when you see it as long as you respond to this prayer because God is watching you. Okay? Will you pray this with me? I'm going to pray. 
You just join in. If you can agree with what I'm saying, you say, God, what, what he prayed, I mean that. I want that for me. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you tonight. I'm just praying, Lord, a prayer to help those that are watching uh, by internet, those who will watch, that are watching this live right now, and then those who will be watching this on the archive uh, segment. But Lord, I'm just praying in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those they have been away from God, and they would just say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for not living for you. Forgive me for not walking where I should have been, for being out on the outskirts, away from you, not living my life for you. But tonight, tonight, I'm turning my life around. I'm turning my life around to serve you. And I'm saying, Lord, if you can use me, if you can use me, take my life just like it is and help me live for you. Help me be a bold witness for you. Someone who will tell about your goodness and tell about your power. That I'll be able to tell people that you're God and that you're good and that you have a plan for our lives. And then you that are watching and you say, I've never made Jesus Lord. Well, then you say this, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the son of the living God. And I believe that you paid the, the price, the penalty price for my sin. And I just accept you now into my life. I ask you to come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord and be my Savior. I receive you now, Jesus, and I thank you that I'm yours. Now, the scripture says that if you'll confess with your mouth, Romans 10, 9 and 10, the Lord Jesus Christ, and confess with, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, if you prayed those prayers, you prayed that prayer, you've been born again, you prayed the other prayer, well then you've come back to God. It's time now. You just need to, you need to get in to a good church that's preaching the word of God, that's preaching about the power of God, that's preaching about that healing power and miracles are for today. Because God is about changing lives and God wants to change your life. Now, Father, I'm just going to pray for all of you that are watching this. Maybe, maybe you're kind of, you've come back to God. You've been struggling a little bit in church. You're not really away, but you're just like, man, I'm just not where I, I should be with God. I'm going to pray for you a prayer that I prayed over a group of uh, young people. They were probably aging, uh, youngest was probably around 20, uh, oldest about 27. I was in Mexico group of people, man, they were just hungry for God. But, you know, a lot of them, they just said, hey, you know, just, it doesn't seem as real as it should be. This, I, I really don't have that connection with God like I need to have. And uh, I know that if you've just been going to, you know, church or just it feels like you're just going through routines and playing church, you need the power of God in your life. You need a divine connection. You need to, to walk with God and experience God on a daily basis. And that comes with spending time reading his word in the, in the New Testament epistles, but also just worshiping God, acknowledging God, and just talking to him, fellowshipping with him. And I'll tell you what, God will change your life. Now, I'm just going to pray for you right now that you will just have a supernatural encounter with God. Every one of you that's watching this, I don't care if you're watching it live right now or if you watch this in the future, whether it's a week from now, a month from now, or a year from now, or five or ten years from now, it makes no difference. You just let your heart agree. You just receive this prayer, all right? Because we've already prayed here at Gospel Flight Ministries. We've prayed for the people who are watching Straight Talk whenever they watch it. We said, God, we're asking you to touch the lives, touch the hearts, impact them. Let there be a divine visitation in the lives of every person that watches these videos or sees it live no matter when they do it. And I know that God is honoring that. I know that God is changing lives. To date, we've had close to 1,400 views. We just started this thing like in February this year. 1,400 views of the videos. Uh, people are watching this. People's lives are being changed. So you watching right here, right now. Father, I pray for this listening audience. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that they would have a God encounter. Lord, just like when you came and got in that car with me and the presence of God just filled the place where I was, I pray that your presence fill that room, that car, 
wherever those people are watching this, whether they're watching this on their cell phones or watching this by computer, watching this on an iPad, whatever they're doing, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they would have an encounter of your presence and that you would just change their life, do something powerful in their life that will just cause a reconnection between them and you and help them to draw close to you and to serve you with all their heart. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray that the fire of God, the power of God just begin to fall from heaven all over the place and touch you. The scripture said to pray and ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain, to pour out his spirit, as the scripture says in Acts, upon all flesh, and it's time. And I'm praying the outpouring of God's spirit come on your life. Right now, right here. If you want to kneel down, you want to pray, you want to worship God, you just, God, here I am, God, I just take it, I take it all, I need this, God, change my life. Listen, just open your heart tonight. Just open your heart and receive what God has for you. God wants your life <clears throat> to be a life of power, a life that he can be glorified through. And I'm telling you, it won't happen by your strength and it won't happen just by your willpower. You just need to cooperate with God, but it's going to be his power working in you. So listen up. You forget about yesterday and you focus on right now. Right now, God's touching your heart. Right now, God's doing things in your life. And you just get a hold of this. You get a hold of this and you say, God, I want everything you got. And if you've not been filled, baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, then you just say, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost and give me that supernatural language so that I can worship you and I can pray you in that language. Because the Bible says in the 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Apostle Paul said, I will speak with the Spirit, I'll sing with the Spirit, I'll pray with the Spirit, I'll sing with the Spirit, and also with my understanding. And it's a supernatural language that God gives. It's a gift of God, and if you don't have it, you need it. You need to be empowered by God. And so I just want you to pray that right now. You just say, God, I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost, but I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with the power of God. I want to speak in a supernatural language by your power and by your Spirit in the name of Jesus. Now, if you've watched this and you're saying, I'm not even born again, I want that. No, you need to get born again first. You need to say, Jesus, you come into my life. You be my Lord and you be my Savior. I receive you right now. And once you receive him, then you ask him to fill you and he'll fill you. Hey, I'm glad you guys tuned in tonight to Straight Talk. I hope this encouraged some of you. I hope it strengthened some of you. I know there's some of you out there. You've been touched. I just know it in my heart. People watching this that... Um, You've got a call. You've got a destiny. You've got an assignment from God. And some of you haven't known it, but you do now. And others that have, you know it's time. It's just time to hook up with God and start walking with God and start serving with God. You know, Christianity is not meant to be a bore. It's not about going to a church building and singing some songs. Listen, friend, it's about working together. Ephesians the uh, fifth chapter says that we then are workers together with Christ. And I'm telling you what, God is working in us and through us. And God wants to change lives through believers. That's you. You've given your heart to God. It's time for you to be a vessel, for you to be an instrument in the hand of God. Well, God bless everyone. I'm glad you tuned in with us tonight. We, uh, Come by your way with Straight Talk the first and third Monday nights of every month, uh, excluding the last one we missed because I was out of the country. wasn't able to do that there. I was, I was preaching in Mexico. But uh, unless, unless I'm going out of the country and won't be here, uh, every first and third Monday night, 7 o'clock Central Time, U.S. Central Time, and uh, you watch this, tell some people about it, and uh, let them know if this blessed you, this helped you. You can write there at the bottom of your screen where you're watching this. Uh, it says uh, comments, suggestions, um, you can, or prayer requests, I think. You can, you can uh, just click on that little link right there and say, hey, I watched this. And, and uh, just let me know that you're, you're watching. God's doing some things. And uh, tune in for the next one. Invite somebody else to Straight Talk. All right. God bless.